What's up, everybody? This is Brad, and we're almost at the end of Fortnite Chapter 3, Season 3, and I thought it's good enough time to go ahead and give my review of the season, and I don't really have a whole lot to say. I know what you're looking at right now, you're going, hey, that's not quite the battle pass. What you got going on here? I'm like, yeah, I added Goku to this because the, the Dragon Ball Super collab for this season was a big deal, and... And I'll get into uh, why I think that in a little bit. But anyway, so the Vibin season. We just came off of the war with the IO and the Seven. And for the time being, it looks like the Seven have thwarted the IO's plans. Now, if you're keeping up with the Marvel comics and what's going on there, with Spider-Man and Wolverine and Iron Man and Storm and all these others, um, where... Uh, the seven are trying uh, that it's, t it's taking place during the previous season, I think, and they're getting ready for the big IO war and there's all kinds of stuff going on. But the most recent issue at the time of this recording that came out actually reveals Geno and we get to see him and we get to see more of this story of, of who he is, what his plans are for the, uh, with the IO. And it looks like, which I don't know. I don't want to get into the spoilery stuff. I mean, well, everybody else has talked about it. I guess it doesn't matter. If you're super worried about spoilers, then I guess you shouldn't be watching this. But anyway, here we go. Uh, Geno's whole plan is to build the perfect society, to find, to, to perfect existence if you can. So that's his goal. Build perfect beings to live in a perfect society. On a perfect world. That is the purpose of the IO. And they do all these experiments and stuff. To try to find that. They're trying to find perfection. Or craft it. Which. Um, that seems to be his goal. To be to become. I'm, I'm assuming Geno's role will be to become the supreme leader. Of all perfection. But I guess we'll find that out. In the future. But. Sorry, I have a milkshake and I wanted to take a sip. But, um, anyway, as I'm sure we're going to build up to that at some point, uh, Geno will come to the island, I'm sure. Will that be next season? Who knows? But this season, and uh, especially with its name being Vibin, I get the feeling this is supposed to be a cool down season. Not a lot was supposed to happen this season is the is the general idea that I'm feeling. And I think that's why we got so many like crazy collabs this season. And I'll go over some of the ones that I uh, like the most. But uh not a lot happened. And, and to be honest, like given the some of the people's feedback that I saw online, a lot of people kind of feel the same way about this season as they did with Chapter 2, Season 6. Remember the Primal Season? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people did not like the Primal Season. And, and you know, I, I haven't hated Fortnite, but that was a pretty boring season. That felt like a very long season. A long period of nothing happening. And that's exactly what this one did. And don't get me wrong, I liked the whole biome that came with the reality tree. The sort of blue and green uh, area with all the big mushrooms and all. It's a cool area. I, I like that. But story-wise, I just... The, the random relics showing up wasn't that interesting. I'm super disappointed that the Dragon Balls didn't well, were not a part of that. Especially after that Dragon Ball teaser with Shenron over the reality tree came out. and Which is now Fortnite's most liked tweet ever. Originally, about I think about 250,000 likes for the... Uh, initial Naruto announcement from the Fortnite account. Well, this one surpassed it by about a hundred thousand uh, likes, to up to about three hundred fifty thousand uh, the last time I saw it. So, Dragon Ball still on top, and I, I love to see it, man. But uh, you should love to see it too. <laughs> anyway, uh. Just the, the, the vibe and story didn't really pick up, in my opinion, to become really interesting until a part of the Seven started to disappear. When some of these members of the Seven started disappearing, then that got interesting. Like, okay, what's going on? You know, where are they going? These are, like, supposed to be the most important characters in the game right now. Where have they gone? Who's taking them? Is something taking them? Is somebody taking them, you know? 
And so story's picking back up now as we're about to wrap the season up, and I'm glad to see that. And you'll remember, in the primal season, they started hyping that up right towards the end with the alien crop circles, with the uh, mysterious uh, abductions that would take place and would randomly teleport you to other parts of the map, I think, before the actual, you know, uh, rideable UFOs were introduced into the game. So... They're already doing that with whatever this mysterious liquid is that's popping up around the map and some footsteps showing up. No clue what that could be. I've seen some theories out there, but, you know, I, some of these could be teases. I don't know. But anyway, the thing is, I just feel like this was a letdown season. and I, Or at least not a letdown season. It was... It, lore wise story wise not a lot happened on the map i mean the the reality tree spreading its roots across the island and changing the pois into different themes i mean that's cool but you know it wasn't like game changing you know it, it there's i don't know it just didn't really it wasn't like a big sort of change in my opinion as like when in during uh, the invasion season where those big UFOs would drop down and would teleport you inside and then you compete with each other in this mini game like thing for better uh, weapons and stuff. That was really cool. This season though, it just doesn't feel like it. It just didn't feel like a lot was happening. Uh, Darth Vader showing up on the map as a boss was cool. I guess we can go ahead and get into the battle pass. But uh, uh, Darth Vader, yeah, loved him being on the map. They had teased it in the last season and came with two stormtroopers too. So, I mean, he wasn't by himself. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I am a little bit disappointed he was the only boss on the map if you don't count the stormtroopers. I like. I always liked like during the Marvel season where there were like four bosses or five bosses. Uh, like Doctor Doom was a boss that season. Iron Man was a boss that season. Wolverine was a boss that season, and during Fort Nightmares, Shadow Midas was a boss. So you had four bosses on the map during that season. And if I'm not forgetting anybody, I don't think I am. But, yeah, like, like, but it was cool. I'm glad that Vader was there. Uh, Evie, I guess is her name. The, the Peace Syndicate uh, girl there with the blue pants on. Uh, the Nintendo Switch colors. She's, she's cool. I, um, the, the, the Scarlet looking girl there. I don't, I think I like her other outfit better than that. And again, again, one of the things I've said before is like, and at least this fixed it with Darth Vader, is he was a boss in the store and he was part of the Vibin quest. So Vader actually was referenced in the Vibin quest and one of the missions in that was to go defeat him. So Vader actually played a part in the story. He was important. So there, that's something. None of these other characters were. Indiana Jones, like the the temple showed up there and you could recreate the, the famous boulder scene, but he wasn't on the map. Not that I, I don't think I've found him. So, I mean, he, at least a relic from the Indiana Jones movies did show up to collect during the Vibin quest. So, uh, he's sort of in the story, but... Again, I just wish more. I wish more of these characters would have a like a important role, like the the I O and the seven members that were in the battle pass. I want to see more of that. I've already complained about that though. Uh, the what was what's his name? The Stormfarer or Storm whatever his name is. The the guy with the yellow bandages. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad look, but he's not interesting. The action figure guy was fun to collect, but you, there's not really like a like a set thing you can attach to him where he has a completed look. It's just random pieces you stick together. So none of them actually form something that looked like like a legit action figure. So that's the one thing I don't like about him. But otherwise, I do like the action figure guy. 
Oh, excuse me. This Dragon Knight, uh, her built-in emote was disabled for a while. But I like her. Again, Indiana Jones looks fine. I don't care much for him. And then uh, the king here. I um, I think I said his name was Malik. That's what it looked like. M-A-L-I-K. Although it may be uh, Malik, now that I think about it. But some people were thinking that uh, on his shield... They may have been teasing some of the stuff for the next season if you look close enough at it. Because it looks like there's a hand reaching up out of liquid. And that's the teaser image for the next season. It looks like Paradigm's hand is coming out of this mysterious liquid that is popping up on the island now. Uh, I think it was an alright battle pass. I mean, Darth Vader... Darth Vader, I think, is the best skin in the whole battle pass. Uh, I don't think any of the designs are bad. I think the the least likable skin in this is the bandages guy. He, he's just not interesting. But uh, anyway, I don't really have anything else to say other than uh, to go back to why I added Goku to this image is I think that the Dragon Ball collab saved this uh, this season from being at least at least it saved it from being considered as bad or even worse than the primal season because. I think that, like, like, what's the best way to put this? Like, people were complaining and saying they, they, the game sucked, it was boring, nothing was happening. It was, And some people were just like, I gotta get out of Fortnite. At least for a while, until something happens. Then the Dragon Ball collab comes, and everybody comes back. People who haven't played Fortnite before are checking it out. Dragon Ball fans are excited for it. I mean, or at least are, are excited for the absurdity of Goku and Vegeta, Beerus, and Bulma being in a shooting game. Which, funny enough, right after the Fortnite collab officially ended, even though, even though I, from what I understand, looking around the Fortnite uh, hub, when I boot up the game, you can still go watch Dragon Ball Super episodes they put in for that collab. And uh, Kame House is still on the map. And the Kamehameha and Nimbus Clouds are still coming down as Mythics. So, collab's over with, but those items and Kame House uh, have stuck around. So, uh, but anyway, uh, PUBG announced they're doing a Dragon Ball Super collab. <laughs> if, you, if you want to see, Dragon Ball is just going big right now. Um, probably not a better time for Goku to show up in Fortnite than now. You know, with, uh, right there with the premiere in the States of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Even though Goku was not a major part of that movie at all. None of the characters in that in the collab Fortnite were important to the story. Except well, Bulma maybe a little bit, but eh, not really. It was a Gohan and Piccolo movie. Primarily a Piccolo movie. But anyway, enough about the movie. Uh, Goku saved this Fortnite season. And I think that when you when people look back on this season in the future, they will it will be remembered as the season that Goku showed up and that we were blasting Kamehameha's at each other. Because the Kamehameha has been one of the funnest items I've ever had to use in this game. And I'll bring it back to the Marvel season uh, stuff again. Doctor Doom and uh, Iron Man's mythics. I like those. But this Kamehameha is just, it's too good. And I said it the first day I started playing uh, uh, for that collab, I posted on Twitter. I said, I can already tell when they vault this item. And it will probably be for good because we have, we did not see the, the Naruto Kunai come back uh, for the second collab. When they vault the Kamehameha and it's gone for good, I'm going to miss it dearly. <laughs> so, if, if, if you're out there playing, maybe shoot one more Kamehameha before the end of the season. Because I'm going to miss that terribly. Hopefully, they'll bring it back when they do uh, the next Dragon Ball collab, which I hope is not too far away, given how successful this was and how much attention it got. Uh, somebody who, I guess, knows how to track who the most popular skins are in the game found out Goku was being used by like 14% of the players a little while back, and it surpassed Spider-Man. So, Goku is more popular in Fortnite than Spider-Man. And I've seen a lot of Spider-Man uh, skins. I've come across a lot of Spider-Man skins. I've killed a lot of the Spider-Man skins in the game. So, <laughs> also have been killed by a lot of Spider-Man skins. So, uh, 
Yeah, and I'm happy as a Dragon Ball fan. I've been watching this show for, what, the show premiered when I was God, almost, almost 25 years. I've been watching this show. But anyway, yeah, this the vibing season will be known as the Dragon Ball season. Or it should. But um, I think that's all I got for you. I am excited to see where the story goes because it's picking back up again. Um, I guess in a similar way to the season one was sort of a, a little bit of a cool down from the big battle with the Cube Queen uh, to prepare for the IO7 war. And now this season is sort of taking a break. I mean, they're, they're dropping you little hints about what's going to happen next while, you know, taking it easy. Again, the whole the theme of the season was vibing. So, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, oh uh, collabs. The other collabs. Of course, Dragon Ball collab loved it. Uh, John Cena showed up. <laughs> Cena showed up with a You Can't See Me emote. The WWE Championship is a back bling. I hope at some point, even if it's not with the WWE Championship and they do it just a generic championship belt, that Fortnite will release an emote that lets you, no matter who you are, uh, raise up a championship belt. We don't have that yet. We've got a trophy one. And, uh, but yeah, I want to see, I want to see a championship belt emote. But, uh, and, oh, and John Cena apparently was very excited for the Fortnite collab and the reactions to it and people doing the memes and stuff, uh, that they do whenever these big collabs drop. Uh, has said, I guess he's already reached out to Epic to see how involved he can get. So John Cena already trying to get uh, to work more with Epic for, for uh, future for, uh, Fortnite content. I don't know if he's going to take the the path of uh, The Rock did, old Dwayne Johnson, and try to become a character within the game using his likeness. Uh, that seems like that would be the next big step because... Uh, Cena, I think, is probably going to be counted as a WWE collab. It's not just a collab with Cena because the title's there. And it's got his theme song in there. And he's wearing his wrestling gear. So, I mean, as long as they don't try to be like, here is uh, John Cena's character from the Marine. I'm like, I don't care for that. In that case, I would rather have Cena just become an original character within the game. Yeah, just do that. Then you can have him team up with the Foundation. <laughs> have him team up or fight the Foundation. And you could just... It, it'd be The Rock versus Cena again. Just within Fortnite lore. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, this was the second Naruto collab set we uh, got this season. Uh, who else? Some of the uh, Marvel stuff came out, like uh, Zero Spider-Man. Um, Starfire in the, was in the item shop. I kind of wanted to buy her, but that was right after my uh, the Dragon Ball collab kind of wiped me in my V-Bucks. I'm trying to save them for the next season. But, uh, yeah, that was some good collabs, I think. But those were my favorite. I like the Naruto collab, I like the Cena collab. Even though it was WWE collab, but a lot of fun I had with that one, uh, and of course, just absolutely love the Dragon Ball collab, and just I'm counting down the days until they do another one. Because the thing with Dragon Ball is there's so many characters that you could pick from anywhere and put them in there. Tons of fan favorites from over the years, just of random characters. I, I joked originally that uh, we, we would have found out how much of a weeb Donald Mustard is if he puts launch in the game. Or lunch. Launch, lunch, whatever you want to call her. Because they pretty much wrote her out of the story. Because Toriyama forgot about her. But I don't want to get in on that. Because I've already talked about that. But anyway, I, that's all I got for the vibing season. Uh, I enjoyed uh, the Dragon Ball stuff. I mean, I, I didn't hate the season, but nothing happened. I get why people were bored with it and why some people will probably go on to compare it to the Primal season. But Primal did not have Kamehameha's. Let's at least admit that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, anyway. 
Season four, less than two weeks now. Looking forward to it. New battle pass. Hopefully the story will be far more interesting and stuff on the island will happen that will keep the game fresh. They usually do a pretty good job of making each season feel fairly unique. And until then, that's all I got for you. New season. We'll see you then.